Whoa, it's the illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. I'm down here at the Talons Out Woodworking Studio. And I'm making this video about why do I make picture frames? It's not like the most creative endeavor in the world, but uh, it has some significance in my evolution as a human being. And um, so, Back before I got my act together and got sober and all that kind of good stuff, I was living up in Topanga, California in the darkness, man. Living with my buddy who, I, who I'd work with and stuff. And uh, I might as well sit down, right? Oh, let's get that adjusted. So uh, I, would, I was living up in my place, man, and I was, I was on, the, on the ropes, man just getting pickled, doing substances and pills and snorting stuff. And I was living in my buddy's drying room. He was, had a grow operation going and he had a room that was a drying room with a bed in it. So I used to live just surrounded by all these pot plants that were drying and I was super bummed out. I think I just was just about to turn 40. My life was over. I'd gotten dumped by this chick. Funny part is, this is where the hologram comes into the story. This is about six plus years ago. <coughs> so I'm living up at my buddy's place. The holograms living up at this place. She's on her last leg of the darkness journey. It's a whole nother story. I gotta bring her in on that whole deal. But uh, so I'm up there and my buddy's like a carpenter and stuff, so he has all the tools and stuff. And I'm, this is my life. I'm living up in this grow room. This house has a bunch of dogs. I don't really dig dogs. This, and it's got this one Rottweiler that eats people, but it won't eat me and it's kind of living with me. And there's rats infested in this house and this house is in this dark corner of Topanga where there's no sunlight. It's the middle of winter, it's miserable. All I was doing was, and I remember Obama had just gotten elected and I'm watching Fox News 24 seven and the economy's collapsing, right? This, I used to be Fruit Loops. And I was drinking pink champagne. There were cases and cases of pink champagne at this house. And I was watching Fox News, drinking pink champagne. And all I could figure to do with my life was go and make picture frames with all my bros tools. But I didn't actually like finish the end product with the glass and, and the little locking mechanisms and all that stuff. I would just make, take this old wood. I'd stumbled into the stash of old wood. I'm gonna show you a piece of what it looks like. I'd stumbled into this stash of old wood. I don't know if you can tell what it's like. It's like it's been weathered. It's been sitting out in the, in the conditions. I think where I'd found this wood had been out there for something like 20 years. This piece has probably been sitting out exposed by sunlight and the stuff for, you know, a decade. And, uh, so my whole plan was, I was up there making picture frames and I had this whole inlay process I was working on. I would take the old wood, I would cut these channels in it where you could see the real fresh wood in there and it looked bitch and I'd make all these stripes and stuff and I'd make all the channels, all the rabbits in the back for the, uh, for the glass and stuff later and then I would glue them together and, and glue them into squares, basically. Squares and rectangles. So I was making these real elaborate squares and rectangles and I, and I would just stack them up and I would go and I'd do this for like two or three hours a day. And I did this for months, man. I would just drink the pink champagne, make picture frames, watch Fox News and pass out, smoke the weed. We were in the weed was in everything, man. My bro was cooking with it, dude. It was, I was just pickled. And so I would just be up there making these dumb picture frames that I thought 
I don't know, it was all I could do to like stay like actually like in motion. And eventually like I, I left that place. Like my bro was like, dude, you gotta go, you gotta go sober up, dude, you're out, you're out of hand, dude. And this was a dude, when I moved into this house, I was gonna get sober and he's like, there's no sobriety going on in this house. And after like five months of my insanity, he was like, yeah, dude, you need to go get some, some help. But of course I was like, F you all the way. So I split and I went back up to my pool on top of the world and was living up there for like another month. And that's when I bump into my spiritual advisor in front of the liquor store who basically brought me into the lifeboat. And that's a whole other story. So here we are. That was in, uh, I don't know, Obama just got elected. So 2008, end of 2008, beginning of 2009. Here we are, 2015. I'm making my picture frames. Way more advanced than anything I was doing then. This is all, this is all upcycled wood that I scored from a job site, man. This is Alaskan cedar, incense cedar. And then this here is... Uh, Teak, I scored from a job site I'd worked on like three years ago. I remember pulling this, these scrap wood out, Alaskan cedar, and then, I'm making some more, you know, this is like, has yet to be cut in the deal. This is yet to be sanded or worked on finish. This is a uh, redwood and Alaskan cedar, redwood, Alaskan cedar. And, uh, so I never actually finished one of these things. And then, you know, I started this whole deal. So I've actually, I finished my first one. Like, I want here's a picture of it. Big picture, picture. And, uh, I made it for my friend. Friends, Janet and Skyler, who were having their new baby, baby Dusty, and they already have two children, Uma and Theo, so I made this that triple picture frame for all the kids, right? But I finished it, man. I, I finished it, I, I put whatever I coated it with, I forget, I can't think right now about that. And then I put glass in there and I had to sand it all, the glass edges down so it wouldn't cut anyone. And I put all the stuff in there and I made the back locking mechanism out of some Alaskan cedar so there were no screws and stuff, but you just twist it in like I figured out how to do it. And I finished it, man, and I gave it to them at, for their baby shower present. And it's the, it's my talents out number one piece. Like that's the, I signed it. I wrote all that stuff on the back. And I guess it's all just really like was the completion of a circle I'd started 2008, man, you know? And, and I guess I can look at it as my whole life cycle like recently, you know? I started just incomplete, man. I was incomplete, yet I had some, some stuff working for me in there. I wasn't completely like in a coma but I was definitely not functioning on all cylinders. And here we are, man, years and years later. And the hottest is, you know, like, like this wood here. This teak, this teak that I got from the job site, I got this three years ago, all on the mission of eventually one day I was gonna use it to make picture frames because it's been this ongoing thing. Like, I guess I'm one of those, like I gotta complete what I start, right? So I'd started off on this thing a long time ago and you know, now here I am, you know, I got, I'm trying to figure out how to make a bunch of stuff. You know, I'm a, like a, a building, I built houses, like be, no, building fine stuff's a whole different skill set of carpentry. And you know, I've been figuring out making jigs and figuring out how to use all the tools on this different level, man. I use them kind of on a big level and like on the fine levels a little bit different, but I'm making the picture frames because I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's to me, it's, I guess this is what it is. Like on a, on a level. It's like, it's, 
it's capturing moments in time, right? When someone puts a picture in a frame, it's because they're, it's a special moment or a special document. It's something special someone figured they would frame and keep in their reality to remind them of a special moment. And I think that's where I was eight years ago in the darkness, man, is I just wanted to get to a place where I could like cap, be part of capturing special moments and participate in that thing, yet I, I couldn't complete it. I couldn't think my way out of the bag yet. So here I am making a picture frame, and I guess it's super awesome that that triple picture frame I made is for my friends to put their picture of their children in on the beginning of their new adventure, right? So that's my whole trip with the picture frames and why I'm just like, you'll see a lot of like, I realize there's a certain like, it's picture frames, man. They're, they're out there. It's, I'm not inventing a new kind of wheel or bettering the earth or doing anything like that. But what I'm trying to do is fulfill a circle in my reality. And eventually, man, I think I'm gonna figure out, you know, it's like practice makes perfect. I gotta work out the bugs on the picture frame thing and then I'll be able to probably do some cool stuff and use what I learned making picture frames to make more cool stuff. But obviously, I think these are kind of coming out sort of good. This is the, uh, like I said, this is teak and Alaskan cedar that I upcycled from a job site. And that's like my whole mission really is all the wood you see back here, except for those that piece of plywood in the back, are all stuff I've upcycled from a job site that were potentially garbage. And I've been doing this new thing where I've been going down to the beach and I've been uh, looking for driftwood. I got my pile of driftwood back there for whatever, but I've been looking for like the manufactured milled driftwood that's been in the ocean for years. And I'm going to do something with this kind of stuff. I don't know what yet. I'm just kind of collecting it and building up my wood supply. And anyway, that's, that's the whole story with the picture frames. All right, it's the illusion, man. Let's keep the frequency high.